Hello and thanks for joining me live. I'm Dr. Rachel. This is Exposed Teeth, the Holistic Dentist Show. I'm the Principal Dentist at Evolved Dental Healing, Holistic Dental Practice in Kenmore, just outside the western suburbs of Brisbane. And thanks for joining me today. Look, I did announce I was going to go live a little bit later, but I'm so excited that I just couldn't wait to get started. So if you're watching this live, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're watching the replay, then that's super cool. I've just kind of come home and I've just put this together really quickly in my office. So pardon me if it seems a little bit messy and untidy behind me there. So I've been a holistic dentist since um, 2000 and, oh yeah, about 2000, 2001. Been a dentist for 26 years. And so I get asked a lot of questions as a dentist and some of them are a little bit left of center being as I'm holistic. So I thought tonight I'd share some of that expertise, sort of a, you know, like these are my frequently asked questions. Um, it's really important to me that I empower and educate people to understand about their dental health and how that impacts on their, their wellness. So one of the questions I've been asked is about my philosophy to dentistry and that it's more than just sort of fixing teeth and what that means. So for me, it's not just about, you know, taking teeth out or removing fillings. Um, you know, there's nutrition and body chemistry and for me that all fits together. So mainstream dentistry really focuses on alleviating pain, restoring function and preventative care to some extent. It's understood that plaque bacteria, sorry, I'm just getting rid of my notifications, they're very distracting. Okay. So, you know, plaque bacteria present in the mouth, they feed off the sugars in our diet, and that's what causes decay and gum disease. But it's also caused by poor or inadequate brushing and flossing, you know, poor oral hygiene. However, this doesn't fit when I see patients who've got super, super clean teeth, they've got a diet who are, you know, that's low in sugars, they don't have a lot of acid, yet they still get cavities and gum problems. And I wanted to know why that happens, because it's super frustrating to see someone who is doing everything they've been told, they're doing everything right, and they're still getting dental disease. Now, Natural medicine approaches illness from the angle of treating the body and the systems and the biochemistry rather than just addressing the symptoms. So it makes sense to me that if we can apply that to the mouth and teeth, that you know, if a person has sufficient, uh, doesn't have enough minerals, vitamins or proteins, they've got emotional stress or chronic illness, then the body is out of balance. You know, the liver's got to work hard to clear toxins, systems become acidic, and that's going to lower the immune response and cause inflammation. Then that acid builds up in the blood, the urine, and the saliva. And saliva is supposed to be alkaline. It's supposed to neutralize the sugars and the acids from bacteria. But if your saliva is poor flow or it's acidic, that's going to draw minerals. So having an acidic body is going to draw more minerals from your already depleted body. So essentially what happens is the teeth become more prone to decay because minerals such as calcium and magnesium are required to balance the acidity in the body. Acidic saliva dissolves your enamel so instead of protecting the enamel and aiding in remineralization and strengthening the teeth after eating sugars or foods, it's actually damaging them. So if we can balance the acidity in the body via nutritional support, you should be able to help prevent decay. Now with gum disease, there's a lot of factors at play. It's not just bacteria and lack of brushing or flossing, although that is, you know, going to play a big role. If you don't break those bacteria down and get them out from around the gums and teeth, you're going to have a problem. You know, but gum disease is an inflammatory condition. It's a response of the immune system to the bacteria. So if we can address this by reducing inflammation, boost the immune response, and we can do this through nutrition and supplements like vitamin C, zinc, and coenzyme 10, then this should make a difference to gum health. I mean, we see patients who are coming for gum treatments and they're just not improving. And that's because they've got 
underlying nutritional deficiencies or systemic problems that haven't been looked at. So I get asked, you know, that why is it you'd been a, a dentist for like nine, ten years before you started looking at holistic health? You know, and what set me on this path? What was the light bulb or the aha moment for me? Well, when I trained as a dentist some years ago, we had no training in nutrition or in the safety of materials. In fact, we were told that once you mix something like mercury and amalgam into the metal alloys, that this is now perfectly safe. Do I figure? However, not long after I'd started working in general practice in the UK, I realized that the suction units, you know, the bit that sucks all the spit up, actually has a filtration device and that captures the chunks of amalgam, the filling that's drilled out of the tooth. And that the dental nurses had to wear protective equipment and they had to empty that filter into a special jar containing chemicals so that the amalgam that we'd caught couldn't outgas mercury. So you're like, this stuff's supposed to be safe, yet all of a sudden when we take it out of the mouth, it's not. And once that jar was full, it would be collected and it would be taken away as hazardous waste material. Legally, we are not allowed to dispose of amalgam down the sink or in the garbage. And that stuff that was out of the mouth was identical to what I was drilling and placing in the teeth. Yet, now it's a toxic waste product. I mean, how could that be? It didn't make any sense to me. So I started asking questions, but back then there was very little information. We didn't have the internet. And working for the National Health Service, we weren't allowed to use any other filling material in the back teeth other than amalgam. Front teeth, we could do white ones, but my hands were tied. And I graduated in 1992, and I think it was in 92 or 93 that, you know, only very early on in my career that the BBC Panorama program, they ran an expose asking, how safe is amalgam? Are your fillings making you sick? Now, the dental board... British Dental Board wrote to all dentists. We, we were sent a pamphlet, you know, it was a really thick booklet with all their scientific information telling us how safe amalgam was. However, a few months later, we were told by the same dental board, do not drill or place an amalgam filling for pregnant women because there is a theoretical risk to the fetus. Now that's very curious when this is supposed to be such a safe material. And what's interesting now that from the 1st of July in the European Union, dentists are no longer allowed to place amalgam in the mass of children 15 years and younger. They're also not allowed to put it in pregnant and breastfeeding women is my understanding. And I think there's some regulations around the elderly or people with poor health. Now, they're saying this is because of environmental issues that um, uh, amalgam from dental practices is a big environmental pollutant, which is true. But my question then to the dental profession, I look like a newsreader, sorry guys, I'm in that mood. Um, my question then to the dental profession is, why have you picked those groups to not use amalgam in? Those groups are what are considered higher risk and higher susceptibility for mercury toxicity from fillings. So it strikes me as a bit odd that if it's about in the environment, why have we picked these subgroups? Why have we not just said, okay, we're going to have a 50% reduction in use or... You know, we're going to push towards using white fillings across the board. There's some questions there for me that are quite unanswered. Well, back to my story. How did I become a holistic dentist? I just take a moment to say hello, John. Hello, Meg. If you're enjoying this, you know, share it. Ask your questions in the comments. I sometimes see them pop up and I can just break off and answer them for you. So this is a, a frequently asked questions live. So if you've got some questions that you'd like to frequently ask, go for it. So I moved to Australia for my own health reasons and a lifestyle change 
Um, because eight years in the National Health Service had, frankly, completely worn me out. And looking back, I do wonder how much my own exposure to mercury day after day have played a part in my health. You know, now I only handle amalgam following strict protocols using smart guidelines, which is safe mercury amalgam removal technique, which Evolve Dental is certified in. Um, it's interesting that I feel much healthier at the end of my 40s than I did in my 20s. Another question that goes unanswered. You know, by pure chance, and look, really, I don't think there's any such thing as coincidence, I got a job in an amalgam-free practice. You know, at first I was still a bit sceptical about the merits of what we were doing, but I really loved working there. And, you know, because I wanted to work there, I followed the guidelines. But shortly after being there, I started noticing changes in my patient's health. I would been removing their amalgams, and as time went on, you know, their mood and their energy levels improved. And just looking at them, their skin colour and their vibrancy in their eyes was, you know, really different. They no longer looked grey and sallow. And this was only after having a few amalgams replaced. And I noticed the same thing started happening for me. I was no longer so tired and sick and I was no longer breathing in mercury vapour all day long. And these changes that I could not put down to anything else was the final piece of the puzzle that confirmed to me that holistic dentistry is the approach I wanted to take with my work. And from there, I did a lot more reading and researching and, and I got mentored and trained and the rest is history. So another question to get asked is why is it so important to have mercury amalgams removed? Well, mercury is very, very toxic to human beings. In vapour form especially, it's the third most non uh, sorry, the third most toxic non-radioactive substance known to man. So it's up there with lead and arsenic. And if you are exposed to mercury, it causes many nasty symptoms in the body. So we took lead out of petrol. We took lead out of paint, yet we're still mixing mercury as dentists and putting them in people's teeth. Mm. The World Health Organization says there is no safe exposure level for mercury. So any little whiff of mercury or ingested mercury causes harm and damage to the body. So when an amalgam filling is drilled, there's lots of friction that vaporizes mercury from the filling. And under normal circumstances, the patient and the dental team inhale that. The methyl mercury then passes from the lungs into the blood where it can enter the cells and it disrupt, um, disrupts and interferes with their normal biochemistry. This adds to a person's toxic load. It increases the risk that that individual will go on to develop mercury toxicity, which can lead to symptoms of illness and, and disease. So by following a safe removal protocol, where everybody breathes clean air, has respirator masks, there's air filtration, exposure to mercury vapor inhalation is massively reduced. So what's the process for safely removing mercury amalgams? Well, the teeth that we're going to work on are isolated within a rubber sheet. And so the tooth pokes up through the sheet and the sheet sits over the mouth. This collects any debris so it doesn't splatter inside to the mouth tissues. It's not being absorbed or swallowed. Um, we use sterile medical air and that's delivered by a nose piece. We use a special amalgam drill, lots of water, special suctions, um, air purification and filtration in the surgery. And then we encourage our patients to get support with supplements and dietary things that will boost the immune system and the detox processes that eliminate mercury from the body. And it's good to do that under the care of a integrative GP or a very knowledgeable naturopath. So once those amalgams are out, what do we replace the fillings with? So amalgam gets replaced with non-metallic restoration. So either what's called a composite resin filling, which is a white filling, or a porcelain restoration or crown. 
The composite that we use at Evolve Dental is very biocompatible, which means it's in line with your body. It's non-allergenic. It consists of an awesomer resin with quartz, silica, and porcelain particles. So it's hard wearing and it's non-toxic. So why aren't more people told about mercury issues? Why is it not so widely known? Why is it that dentists will tell you it's safe? Well, I guess as a profession, many dentists do consider it still safe. Um, that's what we're taught. And unless you question, then that's what you do. And apparently I was chatting to uh, a good colleague of mine recently. Yeah, fluoride-free composite, definitely, Monica, good question. And, and that's our product as well, no fluoride, nothing toxic or allergenic in it. So I was talking to a, a colleague of mine who's um, part of Australians for Mercury Free Dentistry, and she was explaining something to me that I'd heard of, but I, I didn't know how true it was. And she was saying that dentists almost, and it, it, it's, you know, I'm going to maybe go out on a limb here, dentists kind of get addicted to the mercury toxicity there's something about it that feeds the body and I'm, I'm going to have to do a bit more research this. we were only having this chat um, yesterday so I haven't had time to go off and and have a look so there's some addiction going on about using mercury and then also the ideals and beliefs that we've been trained in and look doctors are not trained really to look for mercury toxicity or toxins they're treating the symptoms that you prevent that you present with. And so until healthcare looks at a different way of looking at illness and disease, things like the smoking tooth video, which I would encourage you to go Google and have a watch on YouTube, are only going to be known about by a, ma a minority of people within the healthcare. Now the smoking tooth video, they use uh, infrared um, light that will show up mercury vapor and they get a tooth that's filled with amalgam and they create friction on it and you can see the mercury vapor coming off from the tooth so if you haven't watched it I would encourage you to do so so if nobody's talking about the risks of mercury and the risks of dentistry in relation to that how are we going to know and this is why I do what I do so what is my recommendation for people who still have mercury fillings and how can they find a dentist like me? Well, I'm unique, so you should come see me. You get the best service. Not only joking. Um, and what sort of questions should you ask to make sure that you get the safest procedures? Well, I'm going to encourage you to do lots of research. Be sensible in your approach. There's going to be the extreme ends of any argument. So try and filter some of that out. Now, find a dentist who's smart certified. That's going to use a rubber dam and the separate air supply and understands how to handle amalgam safely. Find one who's going to support you to recommend nutritional support and supplementation to help you through the process. And there's a really good website. Um, it's the IAOMT site, and they have a list of practitioners. That's the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. And there's also a thing called ACNEM, which is the Australian... Um, College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine here in Australia and they will also have a list of practitioners who can help you with mercury detox and dentists who work the same way as I do but having said that we get a lot of patients who travel they come from far north Queensland, Adelaide, Perth, New Zealand, even the UK and Europe while they're over here in Australia so you know it humbles me greatly at how far people are willing to go to make sure that they feel that this is being done in the best way for them. So yes, I promote supplementation and um, nutritional support to remove any mercury that may be in the system. And so I do this often in conjunction with naturopaths and integrative GPs, and but I can give you some nutritional tips for going through this. So we would recommend lots of protein, plenty of water, um, green leafy vegetables, things like coriander, garlic and onions, supplements like vitamin C, um, B6, 
minerals like magnesium and zinc and good probiotics to get the gut going well. And you need mercury scavengers like selenium and glutathione. And you can use like alkalizing greens, um, liquid chlorophyll or chlorella as well. And so what's going to be my top tips to you? Well, if you want to be well, you've got to avoid toxins. You've got to avoid stresses in your life. You've got to look at what are the pillars of health. So I'm going to advise, you know, avoiding things like gluten, alcohol, sugars, including complex carbohydrates, caffeine. I'm going to say eat lots of garlic. They're good for your immune system. Have chili. Um, drink plenty of water and a little tip, go to bed early, get some sleep, get some good rest, deal with your stress. And if you do have dental disease, untreated decay, infections, gum disease, you cannot have a healthy body without a healthy mouth. So I'm going to encourage you to visit your dentist, get a really good checkup and get all those things treated. So this is Exposed Teeth, the Holistic Dentist Show with Dr. Rachel. I'm Dr. Rachel of Evolved Dental Healing, Holistic Dental Practice in Kenmore. If you've enjoyed this, please share it. Thank you so much for watching me live. Thanks for your questions. If you're watching the replay, that's awesome. Now, I'm just going to announce that it's Dental Health Week, so I'm going to be doing some little pop-ups and also that we have some live events scheduled for here in Brisbane. The first one being in October. And I'm going to be talking about, is your mouth making you sick? I'm going, to see, I'm going to help you discover how to support your health and your body to be healthy. And also what to avoid at the dentist. So you know what to look out for. So thank you so much for joining me. Tickets will be available um, probably early September for that event. So if you want to stay in the loop, just keep coming on and watching us. Keep checking out the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Dr. Rachel of Evolved Dental Healing. If you'd like to book in and see me, our number is 3720-1811. I really appreciate everyone's support. I will get back to you in the comments. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.